What's up guys, we're here, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm gonna bring you a build for each of the five classes in Diablo 4 for the upcoming Server Slam beta. So I really do hope that you guys enjoy the build. So let's get right into it. All right, so I do got to give a big shout out to my community right here when we live stream on YouTube. The Warriors are just the Saiyan army is absolutely amazing, guys. They helped me theory craft a lot of these builds. Now, there is some they didn't really get their hands on to, but we had to talk about it in Discord, etc. And we kind of just got all of these done. I wanted to bring all these builds for you guys just to kind of represent a way to level up your character whichever class that you're playing and just something that you can have like a lot of fun playing inside of the upcoming beta especially to get your diablo four rewards for killing shava at level 20 you have to get a character to level 20 and kill a shava a shava goes live may 13th at 9 a.m you're going to be able to fight her every three hours afterwards with the final spawn being at 9 a.m p dt on may 14th if you guys did miss out on your the first beta rewards you're going to be able to get all the previous rewards and the cry of a shava mount trophy which is her tusk or horn or whatever you want to call it that will be uh granted to you for defeating a a shava with a level 20 character so make sure that you guys do that all right guys so we're going to go over each of these builds and just kind of showcase them um i had a lot a lot of fun building these and just having just a blast with my community and just kind of like really doing some theory crafting. And I think along with each and every class, all of the different aspects and legendaries as well as all of the uniques. And then on top of that, all of your Paragon boards that you're gonna be able to do for each and every single character. I think theory crafting and making insane builds and how almost everybody's build is gonna be completely different, I think is gonna be absolutely amazing and one of the driving points to making characters in Diablo 4. But with that said, let's talk about these classes that we have for you for server slam okay so all of these builds are going to be represented with how the leveling process is going to be in diablo 4 this is the closest it's going to be to the full game on release so we've come up with these builds that are going to be really cool to kind of help you know help you level along make the leveling process be as easy as possible and just have fun okay so i want to have a disclaimer here these are not going to be the best of the best in slot best builds or skills or whatever so i do encourage you guys let me know down in the comments what do you think about each of these builds and what you would change maybe there's something else i'm not seeing etc these are just something that we came up with my community so big shout out to them okay so we're gonna start we got barbarian okay uh, I'm going to go Lunging Strike. I think this is really, really good. This is going to be a Whirlwind build. So I have Lunging Strike to kind of help close the gap on some distance. This build is going to be really, really fast. So this is also going to be a really great generator for us. And then we go Enhanced Lunging Strike, which gives us 30% increased damage, but also heals us, okay? Because so we're going to be Whirlwinding, and then when our Fury goes away, we need to be able to get that health back because we're going to be taking a lot of damage. So I think Lunging Strike is just really, really good. We're not doing a third note here at all uh, we're just doing the first two then we're going to come down and put five points into whirlwind uh, whirlwinding is just going to be the it's not one of the best skills but it is a really cool skill we're kind of playing on the fact that it has been the damage has been buffed um, coming into this beta so we're going with five points of whirlwind and then of course enhanced whirlwind you have to have this to gain one fury each time you're hitting uh dealing damage directly to an enemy or you get three against an elite and then we have Violent Whirlwind, so after using it for two seconds, we deal even more damage until it's canceled. Okay, and then we have a passive point here into Pressure Point. Lucky hit, your core skills have a 10% chance to make enemies vulnerable for two seconds. This is really going to help us when we're on lar long, long durations of Whirlwinding. We also have Endless Fury to where our basic skills uh, generate 5% more Fury when using two-handed weapons, which, boom, our basic Legend Strikes going to give us even more Fury. Then we're going to come down, and here's the thing with the Barbarian, guys. I think from the last beta and everything that we kind of talked about, it's almost impossible to not play a Barbarian build without some kind of shouts or all of them. So in this case, we're going Rallying Cry. This is mainly going to be because we want to be as fast as possible. We want to close the gap. We want to have a lot of resource generation for this build because Whirlwinding is going to cost a lot. So we got Rallying Cry into Enhance, which gives us Unstoppable, which is good for CC. Then we have Tactical Rally and Cry, which is going to generate more Fury and grants me additional resource generation. Huge dub. Then we're going to come down and we're going to put one point into Challenging Shout. So we get a damage reduction, which is amazing for the barb. We're going to be really, really tanky. Um, and then, <clears throat> I don't know why I had kick, but we are going to be taking uh, War Cry. 
uh, below and Mighty War, you're going to be able to get um, increasing our damage against um, nearby enemies for 15%. And then we have Enhanced War Cry for Berserking. We're not taking a third point here, but we want the Berserking for increased attack speed and movement speed. Okay, and then we're going to come down and we're going to take a passive point into Booming Voice. Our shot duration is going to last longer. Now, I did have this at 2 by 20%, but I think that's fine. And then I think we come in here and we take a Rank of Swiftness for 22 points just to be a little bit faster. And then our last skill that we're going to have, guys, is Leap. This is going to help us close the gap even more, when we're, especially when we're on cooldowns from our Shouts, which is just really, really good. Um, the damage is kind of irrelevant. This is just kind of closing the gap to, to clear out um, dungeons and mobs even faster. Then we have Enhanced Leap. Uh, for each enemy that it doesn't damage the cooldowns re reduce so we're able to do this again and then power leap So when we damage at least one enemy we generate 40 fury so we can leap and go straight into whirlwinding Okay, and then down here we have nothing. So that is the barbarian guys. It's a really really cool build um, I think it's gonna be really really strong. There's definitely other ways to play this, but I think this is really really good uh, next we're gonna go into um, our Druid gosh RIP the Druid but this is going to be a landslide build, guys. Druid is going to be... This is based off of the build video that we did from the very first beta. And I don't think that much has changed here. Although the companion damage has been increased. So Wolves is going to be very, very strong. But I still think landslide is going to be really, really good going into. Just because of the critical hit chance is just too strong. So we're going to go be going Stormstrike. Stormstrike is probably one of the best generators that the... Um, Druid has um, wind shear definitely generates the most but I think because we're going to be trying to be up close and personal and move as much as possible We're going to storm strike because it's going to allow us to have damage reduction Which is good and then enhanced storm strike it gives us a chance to immobilize all enemies, which is very very important Okay, this is going to help uh, trigger our crit stuff on landslide So then we go fierce storm strike which gives them a uh, 50% chance to make enemies vulnerable Which is even more damage so we got one point in that. Then we come down and we take five points into Landslide. Crush enemies between two pillars of earth, dealing a crap ton of damage. Then we have Enhance, which after Landslide damages enemies four times, the next will immobilize them. Very, very important. Then Primal Landslide, when we immobilize or stun, which on the third hit we immobilize or stun, and then up here we have a chance to immobilize. So on the third one, uh, you gain, uh, whenever we do, we gain a Terra uh, Each enemy hit by Landslide consumes a Terra and we get a guaranteed Critical Strike. Very important with 20 or 40% Critical Strike damage. And then bosses always have up to a 10% chance to give us uh, a Terra back. Very, very huge. This makes this a almost perma crit build, okay? Then we come down and we have to take Earth and Bulwark. We got one point in there. It's probably the best defensive skill that the Druid has. And then we have Enhanced to give us Unstoppable for crowd control effects. And then Preserving Earth and Bulwark, which would give us Fortify. Um, you could take an 8 if you really, really wanted to, but this isn't really beneficial. We want the base life because we're going to be up close and personal. We're going to take some damage. And then we have uh, one Cyclone Armor, which is really good. This is going to allow us to get, uh, give us some damage reduction. And then we come down, and this is probably one of the best skills for this particular build is Vine Creeper. Okay, Vines is what's going to give us poison damage and give us a big AoE effect, but more importantly, we have one point in Vines, and then we take uh, Enhanced Vine Creeper, which immobilizes enemies. The duration is increased by one. So we automatically get to immobilize them for two seconds, and now it's three. The poison damage is good, but we immobilize them for three seconds, which will give us an automatic crit on them when we landslide. And then we have Brutal Vine Creeper. Our critical strike chance is increased by 20% against enemies strangled. Okay, if you didn't want to take this because we already have it, you could take more poison damage. Or you take this off, guys, and you can come in and maybe take wolves. Or you could take um, deal more damage against enemies that are, are buffed like that. Um, or if you really, really wanted to, you could give enemies slow on enhanced cyclone armor. Then we come down for our last skill for um, trample. And this is the only mobility skill that the druid has. This just allows us to get... Um, across the map even faster and then enemies who are knocked back into terrain take additional damage and are stunned which will help trigger our landslide crit so this is a very very good build we're going to have another one i think i'm going to come out and do companion wolves because i think the companion damage increase is going to be um very very good but this is the druid guys let me know what you think down in the comments below next we have necromancer we don't get access to any of the mastery series because we're only at level 20 but Based on how I built my Necromancer from the previous beta, not much has changed. 
the corpse explosion stuff um, has been lessened, but we do really don't care about that. This is all going to be about bone spear. So starting off, probably the best, um, one of the best um, basic skills in the game is bone splinters. We fire three, dealing a lot of damage, and then uh, each subsequent time we hit gives us a chance to gain more essence. Okay, and then we have enhanced bone splinters. Bone splinters have a 30% chance to fire two projectiles, and if uh, cast while I have 50 or more essence. And then we have uh, Acolyte's Bone Splinters. Hitting an enemy at least three times gives us an 8% critical strike chance for four seconds. Very, very huge. Now, if you wanted to, either one is good. You could take Bone Splinters, have 20% chance per hit to make enemies vulnerable. Both of these are good. Acolyte's good. This is also good. It, it doesn't really matter which one you take. Um, and then come down, we're going to have some passives here. We got one point in Unliving Energy for more Essence. And then we have three points here because we're going to be using core skills and then bone spear which is pretty much it that's all we're really using so we have three points into imperfectly balanced so even though our core skills are going to cost 15 percent more they deal 30 percent more damage okay so we hit them with this make them vulnerable hit them with a bone spear and then they die then we have bone spear with five points conjure a bone spear dealing a crap ton of damage enhanced bone spear uh breaks into three shards when it's destroyed dealing 10 percent damage each and then we have Supernatural Bone Spear, which makes an enemy vulnerable. So even more damage. Then we're going to come down. We have one point in Blood Mist. This is just a defensive ability. That way, if we get in trouble, get low on health, we just go invulnerable for three seconds, which is good. And then we heal up. So this allows us to get out of the fight and then get back in. Then we have one point in Bone Prison. Okay, unearth a Bone Prison that immobile or surrounds uh, the target for six seconds. Enhanced Bone Prison, if an enemy is trapped in Bone Prison, they gain 15 per, or fifteen Essence, plus an additional 5 per enemy trap. This is great to just be able to spam Bone Spear. And then we have Ghastly Bone Prison, which enemies inside are vulnerable. So we can just kill them, and then on a boss, this deals helps us deal a crap ton of damage. Okay, and then we come down, guys, and that is it. That is all of our points in for Necromancer. This is pretty standard. There's not a whole lot that you can do with necro with 20 levels as far as doing um minions or anything but i think this is probably going to be one of the most powerful builds for the necro all right into rogue which is probably the build that i'm going to be playing unless demon makes me play druid okay we're starting off there's not anything that's too different uh the balancing changes that they made for the rogue for the imbuements to to have a longer cooldown is sucks but it still doesn't change the nece necessarily the best build in the game from the beta and possibly one of the best builds that are going to be in the end game. And that is Twisting Blades, and that's what we have here. Twisting Blades, if you guys don't know from the previous beta, killed Ashava nine times with the being able to portal back and forth, which I think Blizzard fixed. But Twisting Blades killed Ashava nine times. So the build is very, very strong. So with our generator, we are doing Puncture. You throw a blade instead of having to be directly at melee, and every third hit, um, slows enemies for two seconds and crit strikes always slow we have one point in that and then we have enhanced puncture you gain two energy when puncture damages a crowd control enemy and then fundamental puncture now throws three blades in the spread instead of one each dealing 35 percent base damage so it's lower but hitting an enemy with at least a second blade makes them vulnerable which is huge even more damage then we come down with the bread and butter we have twisting blades guys Twisting Blades impales the enemy with your blades, dealing 63% increased damage. And then they're going to take eight times that while they're impaled. And then for 1.5 seconds, the blades return. Enemies are pierced for a lot of damage. Okay. So, and then it has the combo points, but we don't have that. Um, and then we have Enhanced Twisting Blades. Twisting Blades deals 30% more damage when returning. And then when our Twisting Blades return with Advanced Twisting Blades, our active cooldowns are reduced by one second as they pass through up to three seconds. Very, very huge. Okay. Then we come down to Agility Skills. Of course, we have Shadow Step. This is just going to help us be unstoppable for crowd control effects as well as um, get to our targets even faster. And then, of course, what's a Rogue build without Dash? This just allows us to get through enemies, which will also help proc our Twisting Blades when the Blades return. Very, very important. Then we're coming down, and Dark Shroud is pretty much on every rogue build. It's just going to give you a protective shadow. You gain five of them with a lot of damage reduction per shadow, which is 8%. Then we have Enhanced Dark Shroud, which gives us a 10% chance to not be consumed, which is good. And then we have Countering Dark Shroud. When I, we have at least two active Dark Shrouds, we gain 10% crit chance. This build is going to be all about critting as well, so we need to be able to do that. And then come down. 
I have shadow imbuement. Yes, all of the imbuements cooldowns are longer, but that's okay. It's not that big of a deal with how much damage you're gonna be doing. So this allows us to imbue our weapons with festering shadows. And then the infection of the shadow expires and deals 40% damage to that enemy. Then we have enhanced shadow imbuement. You have 25% increased critical strike chance against injured. So this helps us when monsters are really, really low and we can just one shot them in the end. And then we have blended shadow imbuement. Shadow imbuement's primary explosion makes enemies vulnerable for two seconds. This will set off a chain reaction effect to just blow up multiple enemies all at once. Then we have some passive points here, guys, in Shadow Crash. A lucky hit gives us a 10% chance to stun enemies. And then we have three points into Consuming Shadows, which will allow us, uh, when we kill an enemy with shadow damage, we gain 30 energy back so we can continue to just, you know, do Twisting Blades over and over again. So that is the rogue, guys. It's a pretty standard Twisting Blades build. You can use any of the imbuements. I just like the shadow imbuements because it's going to be able to do a lot of damage, especially against big groups. Poison damage is probably going to be very good against like a Shava or uh, cold damage is going to be even better against big, big mobs. So that is the rogue, guys. Let me know what you think down in the comments. And then certainly last but not least, we have the Sorcerer which is arguably one of the strongest builds from the first beta. Yes, they did nerf or lessen the damage of Chain Lightning, but it doesn't matter because we're doing Hydras again. So we have Spark as our generator, guys. This launches a bolt of lightning that shocks enemies four times, dealing 8% damage to each enemy that is hit. Then we have Enhanced Spark. So when we hit a primary target, we have a 20% chance for it to hit up to three additional enemies, which is good. And if there are no enemies, Spark deals an additional 20% against the primary target. Very, very good against bosses. Then we come down and we're gonna take Chain Lightning, four out of five points. Um, Chain Lightning is gonna unleash a stream of lightning that deals a lot of damage in up to nearby enemies up to six times, prioritizing enemies. We have Enhanced Chain Lightning, which gives us 3% critical uh, strike chance per bounce. Very, very huge. And then we have greater chain lightning, which if the chain lightning bounces off us, we still deal 25% increased damage. So against bosses, 1v1, this still hits like a Mack truck, even though the damage has been reduced. Down to our defensive skills, guys, we have one point in teleport. You have to have this. This is just really great. Although you don't have to, but I like it. It just allows you to get around the map a lot faster. And then, of course, what's a Sork build without ice armor? This allows you to have... Um, a barrier around you for six seconds and um, you get 10% of your damage dealt to the barrier which is really really good this just helps you stay alive then we have enhanced ice armor so while it's active our mana regen is increased by 25% absolutely critical for us to constantly spam chain lightning then we have frost nova which is probably the key second best um, ability in this build so we have one point in frost nova which unleashes a big aoe to freeze enemies around us enhanced frost nova makes uh reduces the cooldown up to two seconds uh up to six seconds per cast by killing enemies that are frozen and then mystical frost nova which makes enemies vulnerable for four seconds increase to eight seconds against bosses very very critical you you teleport in drop hydras hit frost uh frost nova and just annihilate everything on the board and then of course we have five out of five points for hydra nothing was changed about this hydra is going to be one of the strongest skills in the game so we got five points on here that summons a three-headed Hydra for three seconds. Each head spits out fire, dealing a crap ton of damage. We get maximum one at a time, but as soon as we get the legendary power, you get two. Then we have enhanced Hydra. While healthy, you cast uh, your cast of Hydra gains one additional head to four Hydras. And then we have summon Hydra, which burns enemies for a lot of damage over six seconds. Very, very strong. And then we have one point in align the elements as our passive. You gain 5% damage reduction against elites for each second you haven't taken damage up to 50%. This is just a damage reduction um, skill. This only applies to elites in dungeons or uh, bosses. So this is really, really good. If you didn't like this, what you could come down to is ice armor. And um, you could pick either one of these. Damaging against vulnerable enemies contributes 100 more to ice barrier. Like any of these are fine. Lucky hit. You could even glass cannon for more damage if you really, really wanted to. But I think the added thing against dungeon bosses elites and stuff is very strong and then that is it guys this build is basically hydras nothing's really changed although they did give a little bit of a nerf to chain lighting it does not matter the build is still going to be one of the best in this beta and probably in the game unless they do something to hydras so guys that is my five builds that i have for you for level 20 
in the upcoming server slam diablo 4 beta again like the video if this guy has helped you out and you guys have enjoyed it uh big shout out to my community the saiyan army uh on our live streams here on youtube for helping me theory craft some of these this is really really great and then comment down below guys what do you guys think about these let me know uh what you would change etc let me know if you're going to play any of these that would be great and don't forget to subscribe guys we are almost at 10k we want to get there before the release of diablo 4 and then as always stay gaming and i'll catch you guys in the next one peace